Okay, hi guys. Um, I really miss seeing y'all's faces every single day, and I hope that y'all are doing well. Um, if you want to tell me how you're doing, I would love to hear it. So you can always write a letter to me on the back of your um, pages or send a letter with your family when they drop it off. Um, but I miss hearing from you. Um, and this is our last chapter of Junie B. So uh, it's called Pigs and Ducks and Stuff. And remember, get out your questions for Junie B. Jones chapter nine. And the first question is, what did the principal tell Junie B's class? So we're listening for that. And then number two is who did Junie B meet at the end of the book? Maybe have a prediction ready. Chapter nine, pigs and ducks and stuff. Principal went into room nine with me. Then he clapped his giant hands together. Boys and girls, may I please have your attention, he said. I would like to explain what happened during show and tell today. It's about Ginny B. Jones and her new baby brother. Just then, that Jim I hate jumped right up out of his chair. He's not a monkey, is he? He shouted very loud. I knew it, I, know, I knew he wasn't a monkey. I made a big fist at him. How would you like this up your nose, you big mean Jim? I hollered. Then principal frowned at me. And so I smiled. I hate that guy, I said nicely. After that, principal took a big breath. <sighs> Boys and girls, there's a good reason why Jimmy B told you that her baby brother was a monkey, he said. Yeah, it was all my grandma Miller's fault, I interrupted, because she told me that my brother was a little monkey. Only she didn't mean he was a real little monkey. She just meant he was cute. Only who in the world knew that silly thing? Principal made another frown at me. Then he talked some more. You see, boys and girls, he said, Sometimes adults say things that can be very confusing to children. Like, what if you heard me talking about a lucky duck? Have you guys ever heard that? Have you ever heard someone say, oh, you're such a lucky duck? If you don't, it's okay. It doesn't actually mean a real lucky duck. You might think I was talking about a real live duck, but lucky duck just means you're a lucky person. Right, said Mrs. And when we call someone a busy bee, we don't mean he's a real bee. We just mean he's a hard worker. Hey, I just thought of another one, I said, very excited. A dumb bunny isn't a real alive bunny either. It's just a plain old dumb bunny. Then my friend Lucille raised her hand. <clears throat> I've got one too, she says. Sometimes my Nana, her abuela, calls my daddy a couch potato. A couch is like a sofa and a potato is a papa. Only he's not a couch potato. He's not a real potato. He's just lazy. Yeah, and I'm not a big pig, said my new boyfriend, Ricardo, but my mom says I eat like a big pig. <laughs> After that, a whole bunch of other kids said they eat like a big pig too. Has your parents ever said that you looked, or not looked, have ever said that you eat like a big pig? If so, they're just kidding. Only a boy named Donald said he eats like a horse. And that boy, William, that cries a lot, he eats like a little bird. Just then it was time for the bell to ring, and so me and Principal said bye-bye to each other, and I went to my seat. Then I gave Lucille back her red chair. She was very nice to me. I'm sorry that your brother isn't a real monkey, Junie B, she said. Thank you, Lucille. I'm sorry that your daddy isn't a real potato. After that, the bell rang for us to go home, and so me and Lucille and that Grace held hands and we walked outside together. Only then a very wonderful thing happened, and it's called 
I heard my mother's voice. Junie B, Junie B over here, honey. Daddy and I are over here. Then I looked outside and I saw her. And so I ran real quick, speedy quick to her. And then me and mother hugged and hugged because I hadn't seen her for a very whole day. Then my daddy got out of the car and he had a little yellow blanket in his arms. And guess what was in that thing? I think that's one of your questions. My new baby brother, that's what. He was very teeny and pinkish, except his head had a lot of black hair on it. I touched it. It felt very fuzzy. Just then Ricardo walked by. That's Ricardo. And he saw my teeny brother. Cool hair, he said. I smiled very big. I know it, Ricardo, I said. And guess what else? He doesn't even smell like P.U. After that, I got in the car. So there's Junie B. There's her little brother. There's her mom and dad. And there's Ricardo. She got in the car. And I told mother about Lucille's locket. Remember a locket's the necklace with the heart on it. And she said, maybe I could get a locket too. And I could put my brother's teeny head in there. Yes, and I would also like some pink shoes that go up to my ankles, please. I said, very polite. Maybe, said mother. Oh boy, I said, because maybe doesn't mean no. That's why. And so then I lifted up the blanket and I peeped at my baby brother one more time. So what do you think of him, Jenny B? said mother. I smiled very big. I think he's the cutest little monkey I ever saw, I said. Then mother laughed and I laughed too. That is chapter nine. So make sure you fill out your questions. And the last question on the page says, what was your favorite part in the book? So I know a lot of you like Junie B. Jones, even if you didn't like Junie B. Jones, I'm sure that you had a favorite part. So make sure that you have several sentences about your favorite part. Why was it your favorite? What happened? Was it silly? Was it, was it did something bad happen? Was someone mean? Tell me why. And one sentence is not good enough, so give me at least three, please. Okay, remember to do your best on your packets. And if you don't understand something, you can always, um, I can return it later. Or you can get your parents to message the El Camino school phone or something. But I want to help you. But don't, don't stress. If you don't understand something, we'll go on um, and learn about it later. But just be safe and make sure you're wearing... Um, your masks if you go outside and um, wash your hands um, but I love you and so does God and I miss you